when we are measuring specific heat, um, this is going to be very closely related to the definition of a calorie that we learned on Friday when y'all were in here. So if you remember from the first page of our notes, we called a calorie the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of pure water by one degree Celsius. It's basically that same terminology, that same language that we use to give the definition of specific heat, but instead of it being the amount of energy that it takes to raise one gram of water, it's specific to whatever substance it is that you're talking about. So specific heat is going to be the amount of heat or the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of any substance by one degree Celsius. And we abbreviate specific heat with the variable C. So I'm going to go ahead and just put specific heat down here. And the units that we use for that are joules per gram degree Celsius. So this tells me how many joules of energy I need per gram degree Celsius of whatever substance it is that I'm talking about. Um, your specific heat is specific to the substance that you're dealing with. So generally, we'll look it up in this chart. Or if you are not given specific heat or you're not given what substance it is that you're talking about, then likely the goal of the question is to identify the substance. So we'll talk about that a little bit later on as well. And the heat absorbed or released by a substance during a change in temperature depends on, first of all, the specific heat. of the substance. It also depends on the mass of the substance. So this M is going to stand for mass. and the amount by which the temperature changes. So this delta T is to represent our temperature change. So I have here that delta T is equal to your temperature final minus your temperature initial. So if you don't remember what the F and the I stand for, it's always final minus initial. The order matters because that will give you your sign. So delta T is change in temperature. And then the Q on here stands for the heat or energy. This is just heat, um, which is a form of energy and we measure that in joules. So a big part of this unit is going to be differentiating between heat and specific heat, um, and then also, of course, not mixing up heat and temperature. So our equation, or our formula for this, is going to be Q is equal to your mass, which is M, times your specific heat, which is C, times your change in temperature, which is delta T. So let's try example A together. So example A says, if 10 grams of iron cools from 50.4 degrees Celsius to 25.0 degrees Celsius, how much energy is released? So starting out right away, my 10 grams, what variable would this be? Mass. So I'm going to identify that as M. The only equation that we have so far is Q equals MC delta T. So I'm just writing that there, knowing that I need to figure all these out. As far as what we're looking for, what the question is asking us for, what variable would that be? The question says, how much energy is released? That would be Q. So I know that my Q is going to be a question mark here. I don't have a delta T value given to me, but I do have two different temperatures. So based on the way that this is worded, I can calculate that delta T, my change in temperature, so it says it cools from this to this. So that tells me that this is my final temperature. So I'm going to take 25.0 minus 
if you can't do that in your head, use a calculator. So 25 minus 50.4. One of the most important parts of this is the sign on that. So negative 25.4. Keep the negative. And then I guess our unit is degrees Celsius for that one. Okay, so my delta T, I have an M. I'm looking for Q. What is the only other thing that I need to solve this? Specific heat, which is C. Do I have a specific heat value given to me? I guess not directly in the question, but could I find one very easily? Yes, on the table. So it tells me that this is iron. And since my substance is iron, the specific heat of iron is going to be given to me in this table here. So I could look up iron. The little s next to iron stands for solid. So that tells me that solid iron would have a specific heat of 0 0.449. So C equals 0 0.449. And our units are joules per gram degrees Celsius. Then I would just plug all of these into my equation. So I know that Q equals MC delta T. My Q value is going to equal my mass, which is 10, times my specific heat of 0 0.449, times my delta T, which is negative 25.4. Because we are concerned with the direction of heat transfer in all of these kinds of questions, you need to pay attention to when you have negative values. So if I have a positive, a positive, and a negative, and I multiply all of these together, I know that my final Q value is going to be what? Positive or negative? Negative. So I can go ahead and put that on there. And then it doesn't really matter if you type into your calculator with a negative or not. Um, if you are using this calculator, when you type it in with the negative sign, you're going to use that button. Don't use the subtraction sign, otherwise it will give you an error. So when I type this in, I would type 10 times 0.449 times, and then you can do the negative 25.4, or really, if you just remember to make it negative at the end, you technically don't have to type in that part into your calculator. So then I would get negative 114.046. Because I have the room and that's not a whole lot of decimals, I'm just going to write down the whole thing. So 11, make sure, make sure that it says negative, 114.046. And our unit for Q is going to be joules. And then at the very end, if this is the final answer that you're submitting, you need to take into account significant figures. And this question has how many total significant figures? This was used in my calculation. It has how many sig figs? Just one. Just the one is significant. That trailing zero is not significant because there's no zero in my number. This has three sig figs. This has three sig figs. Um, this number, because it would be, I guess, considered a constant, we're not going to count any of our um, C values in here towards significant figures. Either way, though, this wouldn't be the least number. So one is my least number of sig figs in my question. So I would need to round this to one significant figure. So my answer would be negative what? Wait, sorry, say that again. Negative. Negative 1? Negative 100. Negative 100, yes. Negative 100 joules. So if you have negative 114 and you round that to negative 1, that is way, way too much rounding. Um, remember that your trailing zeros are never significant if there's no decimal in your answer. So negative 100 joules is my answer. The fact that it's negative tracks with the way that the question is worded, because if I look at this, it says iron is cooling. So it is releasing energy. If energy is released, that tells me that I have a negative delta H value. It also tells you that your temperature change is negative. So those two things are going hand in hand. Good. Note the units that were for each of these. Um, so in here, I gave you the units that you need to use. They need to be consistent in order to use this specific heat chart. So if I give you kilograms, that is an acceptable um, 
unit to use for mass in a lot of cases. However, in these types of questions, if we are using this specific heat value and it's joules per gram degree Celsius, that means that my mass also needs to be in grams. So it's not okay to just plug in kilograms in that equation. I need to first convert to grams. Um, same thing with you'll eventually have kilojoules given to you. You need to convert that into joules, otherwise that's not going to work um, with the units that we have for specific heat. So with that being said, if you look up specific heat online or in a textbook or something like that, there are charts that give you specific heat in a different unit that's not joules per gram degree Celsius. It could be kilojoules per gram or it could be joules per kilogram or it could be um, in different units for temperature. So the values might be slightly different in that regard, but for us, let's just be consistent and use joules, grams, and degrees Celsius. So for letter B, it says a swimming pool holds 22,500 kilograms of water. How much energy is needed to raise the temperature of the pool by 22 degrees Celsius? So the first thing we're going to do is identify the equation we're using, and we only have one equation, which is Q equals mc delta t. I want to see this equation actually on your paper. What is the question asking us for? Energy. Energy, so what variable is that? Q. So just like before, I'm going to say Q equals question mark because that is what the question wants. I guess I would write that in red. If you are raising the temperature of the pool by 22 degrees Celsius, I don't have a final temperature and I don't have an initial temperature given to me. This 22 degrees Celsius is how much the temperature was changed by or was raised by. So that 22 degrees Celsius is already my delta T. So my change in temperature is 22 degrees Celsius. Would it be positive or negative 22 degrees Celsius if we are raising the temperature? Positive. So I would just write 22 degrees Celsius. If I said I wanted to cool it by 22 degrees Celsius, then that would tell me, again, my delta T would still be 22, but it would be negative. So you have to pay attention to what the wording of the question actually says. My mass is given to me as this number right here. But like I just got done saying, we need our mass to be in grams, and it's given to me in kilograms. So you can convert that. So take kilograms, bring kilograms to the bottom and grams to the top. There were like three prefixes that I wanted you all to memorize at the very beginning of the year, and kilo was one of them. What does kilo mean? Thousand. Okay. So does that mean that there are 1,000 kilograms in a gram or 1,000 grams in a kilogram? 1,000... All right, let's ask a different way. Um, which one is bigger, a gram or a kilogram? A kilogram is bigger. So the way that you can word it to help you got kind of set this up correctly is put a one next to whichever one is bigger. So if kilogram is bigger, I'm going to say how many grams are in one kilogram? And the answer is 1,000. You'll put a one next to whichever is bigger because I don't like to use fractions in these charts. It just kind of makes it unnecessarily confusing. So instead of dividing by 1,000, we are multiplying by 1,000, which makes sense because this is talking about a swimming pool, and it gives me a huge number of kilograms of water. The number of grams of water that that's going to hold is going to be 1,000 times more than that. If you can't do it in your head, plug it into your calculator. Otherwise, if you can do it in your head, you know you're just adding three zeros to the end. So 22500 zero, zero, times 1,000 gives you a huge number, but again, it makes sense with what we know given the context of the question. So 2250000. Two, zero, 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 zero. And your unit would be grams of H2O. So that is my mass. So my Q value, I know that that's what I'm looking for. My mass, I've already calculated. My C value, we'll come back to. And then my delta T was given to me as the positive 22 degrees Celsius. How would I find a C value in this case? Hmm? 
No. Do I have any? What is C? What does C stand for? The chart. Okay, perfect. So C stands for specific heat, and I will get my specific heat as long as I have a substance. I can look it up in my chart. So what substance are we dealing with here? Water. Okay, so it says H2O. I would look this up, and there are three different values for water. There is liquid, solid, and gas. Since I'm filling a swimming pool, I think that it is an appropriate assumption to make that we are using liquid water. Um, however, you will have some practice questions where you're using water, and it may or may not be in the liquid state. So you need to know the freezing point and the boiling point of water to know that if you are outside of that range, you're going to use the specific heat of water in one of the different states. So just as a refresher, when does water freeze in Celsius? Zero degrees. Zero degrees Celsius is the freezing point of water. So if you have water below that temperature, it is a solid. And then when does it boil or evaporate? Good, 100 degrees Celsius. So if you are above 100 degrees, you're going to have water in the gas state. So that would change your specific heat that you're using. But if you're filling a swimming pool, I'm going to go ahead and say that that is water, liquid water. Um, so that is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. So my C value equals 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. So my Q value that I'm looking for is equal to my mass, which is that big number right there. So 22500, 000, 000, times my C value of 4.184, times my delta T value of positive 22. Since there are no negatives in this entire equation, my final answer should definitely be positive. So I get that Q is equal to whatever all that is. So 22,500,000 times 4.184 times 22. So when I type all of this in, I get 2 billion 0 0.071 that's fine. If you write it in scientific notation, um, at the end, I always use um, my last step for significant figures. So in this case, we haven't looked at sig figs yet, but I have one, two, three sig figs here, two sig figs. So I would round this at the end to just two significant figures, and I do think that scientific notation would be the best way to write it. So as long as you have two significant figures, you're good. unless you want to write it up. Do you? Crickets from the gallery. If you were to write this as a normal number, so not scientific notation, but just a regular number with two sig figs, how would you write it? So two. Two, one, zero, zero, like this. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? Yeah. Okay, that is what I would call it if you are using regular notation and your unit would be joules. So that is good. Otherwise, if you write it in scientific notation, I would say 2.1 times 10 to the what power? Nine. To the ninth power. So you can get the ninth power because in this number, the decimal would be at the very, very end. And you would just count how many places we had to move the decimal to make it match that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Boom. And that would still be joules. Both of those would be acceptable answers. Um, I mentioned this in my first period class that sometimes, based on your significant figures, the only way to make it significant to make it have the correct number of sig figs and still represent the same value is to put in scientific notation. In this case, those two represent the exact same thing, exact same number of sig figs. So um, both of those would be acceptable. 
but just be on the lookout for this. So if you calculate a number like this and then you see something in scientific notation on your test, it has been a while since we've actually used scientific notation numbers that you have to take in and out of normal notation. Um, but that doesn't automatically rule it out as an appropriate answer for that question. So if you see a list of multiple choice options and only one of them is in scientific notation, that doesn't mean that you should just decide that, that one's not the right answer. All right, example C is um, worded in just a little bit of a different way because we are not calculating heat or energy. We are calculating specific heat because we have an unknown metal. So because the substance is unknown to us, we are not able to use the specific heat chart to look this up. So my equation starts as the same thing. It would be Q equals MC delta T. However, because it's asking what is the specific heat, what am I solving for? C. So I'm going to rearrange my equation to solve for C. So Q equals, or not Q equals, sorry, C equals. To get C by itself, I would divide this side by everything that C is being attached to through multiplication. So divide by M and divide by delta T. So my M, I would get M over M, which is 1, so that would cancel out, and delta T over delta T equals 1, so that would cancel out. If I divide this side by M and delta T, I need to divide the other side by M and delta T. So then I'm left with C equals Q over M delta T. So on the worksheet that y'all picked up on your way in that says, um, what is the formula to calculate heat, or what is the formula to calculate specific heat? That's the formula that I'm talking about. So we only have one equation that's given to us here, but we're rearranging that equation to solve for whatever it is that we need. So C equals Q over M delta T. So then my C is equivalent to my number of joules, so my Q value in this question, so it says a sample, a 30 gram sample of an unknown metal is heated from this to this. During the process, the metal absor absorbs 1.00 kilojoules of energy. What is the specific heat of the metal and which metal might this be? So if I have kilojoules, what do I need to do before plugging it into my equation? Perfect, convert to joules. So just like in the above question, I'm going to use the conversion factor. Um, this is the first time that we're using joules and kilojoules, so I have not explicitly taught you the conversion factor between joules and kilojoules, but because you memorized kilo as 1,000, you should know that 1.00 kilojoules, and then I bring kilojoules to the bottom and joules to the top. Which one is bigger, a joule or a kilojoule? A kilojoule is bigger, so I'll put a 1 next to it. That means that there are 1,000 joules in a kilojoule. So 1 times 1,000 means that I just have 1,000 joules. So my C value equals 1,000 joules. Or sorry, my Q value, but we set that equal to C. And then I plug in my mass, which is 30 grams. That's already in the correct unit, so I can just go ahead and plug in 30. And then my delta T, I would have to calculate it. So delta T equals, is it going to be positive or negative? Positive because it's being heated, so the temperature is going to increase. And I know that if I take my final temperature, which is 59 degrees, minus my initial temperature of 22 degrees, that gives me a positive value. So that is 37 degree temperature change. When you plug this into your calculator, there are multiple ways that you could do it correctly. You need to make sure that you actually practice typing it in because when you have two things on the denominator, this is where I'm seeing a lot of students make silly calculation errors. So you could either start by plugging in your denominator, do 30 times 37, get that answer, and then do 1,000 divided by your answer. That is an appropriate way to do it, and it will give you the right thing. Otherwise, you can type in, or if you're using your phone calculator, this is one of the ways that I like to do it is you'll type in 1,000, and then you'll divide by 30, and then you'll also hit just divide again by 37. It gives you the exact same answer. You can do 1,000, divided by 30, hit enter, and then divide by 37. 
and you'll still get the same answer. So at this level, we really should not be making mistakes about typing it into our calculators. So I will go ahead and call this 0 0.901, I guess. But then we're going to round to sig figs at the very end. I have two significant figures here, two there, just one right here. So as far as significant figures, I would round this to 0 0.9. And because it's C, what is my unit? Perfect. Okay, so joules per gram degree Celsius. So that is my specific heat, but the other part of this question says, which metal might this be? So I would look up um, in my specific heat chart, knowing that these have different numbers of decimal places, are there any of these that would round to 0.9? Aluminum. Okay, so this one, 0.897, that is awfully close to 0.9 for aluminum. So I would look just to make sure there's nothing else super close. Carbon dioxide, I know that's not a metal, but it's 0.8, and that wouldn't round up to 0.9, so it's not super close. Same with granite. Again, relatively close, not really, though. So aluminum is definitely the closest. And then the last question on here says, a 4.5 gram nugget of pure gold absorbed this many joules of heat. What was the final temperature of gold if the initial temperature was this? So again, I only have one equation that we have learned so far. Our equation is Q equals MC delta T. But what this is actually asking us for is the final temperature, so that would be TF. I was given an initial temperature, so this would be my Ti, and I know that delta T is calculated by taking my temperature final minus temperature initial, so I could find my Tf if I just had my delta T and this value, which means that in my equation, I would rearrange this to solve for delta T, and then I'll plug that into this equation at the very end. So I'm going to take this equation and get delta T by itself. So what would I need to divide by on this side? Just MC. So my M and my C would both cancel. So I need to divide my other side of the equation by MC. So I know that delta T is equal to Q over MC. My Q value is 276 joules, so I'll plug that in. My M is 4.5. And my C value, C stands for specific heat. Because I have a substance, I'm able to look up pure gold in my specific heat chart. So I would look that up. Gold as a solid. It says it's a pure gold nugget. So I would go ahead and assume that's a solid. So that's 0.129. Sometimes the specific heat is not different depending on the um, state of matter of the substance, and sometimes it is. Sometimes they're really close, and then you kind of call them the same thing. So for example, solid and gas for water, 2.03 versus 2.01, are really close to one another. But then sometimes they're way, way off, like water as a liquid has a way different specific heat. And I want you to note that water's specific heat as a liquid is way higher than almost everyone else's specific heat. Or it's way higher than everyone else's, not almost. Way, way, way higher. So when I plug this into my calculator, I get 276 divided by 4.5, divided by 0.129. That gave me this, 475.452. As far as significant figures, 
Um, this one has two significant figures. This has three significant figures, two significant figures. There's nothing I used with just one. So my lowest number of sig figs would be how many? Two. So I would round this to 480. So that is my delta T. That's not my final answer. Because it's not your final answer, that means you didn't actually have to round at that point. You could keep that number of decimal places. Um, depending on exactly when you round, it could change your answer. So in general, I would say to keep that, like all the decimals. But if you round it here, you could still end up with the same answer. So I know that delta T is equal to, I'm going to keep the whole thing, 475.4. 5, 2, and it's also equal to that, so I would set 475.452 equal to temperature final minus my temperature initial, so I'm just going to go ahead and plug in my 25 degrees since that was my initial temperature given to me. My final temperature is being stuck to my initial temperature right now through subtraction, so just like over here I got my variable by itself by doing the opposite function, so here I divided when it was being multiplied. Over here, the opposite of subtraction is what? Addition. So I'm going to add 25, and that gets rid of the 25 on this side. I can do the same thing on the other side of my equation, so plus 25. So then I get 475.425 plus 25. Tells me that my temperature final would equal... Five hundred point four two five. Four five two, sorry. So five hundred point four five two. So if this is your answer, how many significant figures does your final answer need to have? Two. two. How could I possibly write this with two sig figs? Scientific. Scientific notation would be the easy way, I think. Okay, so 5.0 times 10 to the what power? and your unit is degrees Celsius. So this is what I mean by it looks kind of weird when you're talking about a temperature in scientific notation. If you round it early, then it ends up being a little bit easier to actually write it with two sig figs. So if I do 480 degrees Celsius plus my 25, so 480 plus 25 would give me 505. You could technically round that to 510 degrees Celsius, which makes a little bit more sense in the context of the question. Um, so if you were looking at these, I would look out for whichever one is the more um, appropriate answer in terms of your multiple choice questions.